Hello everyone and a very warm welcome indeed to this week's episode of One Man and His Boat. Last week I was asking you what you thought this was. This week I'm going to show you exactly what it is. So guys, before I go on to tell you about all about this and what attaches to it, which is the most important bit, um, I just want to say thank you all for all your lovely comments, for all your likes, for all your shares especially, uh, and for all your donations. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't happen, and by God, it's, it really is starting to boost now, and we can't thank you enough. So if you like what you see, keep doing what you're doing, keep giving it the thumbs up, Keep writing comments because the more you do that, the more YouTube um, puts us out there so other people can see. So don't be greedy, don't be selfish. Show the world exactly what One Man and His Boat is all about. Now, we're talking about this. I was more looking for answers from people that didn't really know, just to see what kind of guesses would um, happen. And this, my lovelies, is basically, we call this a scoop. It's basically a water intake. Now, the water comes in here, up through this tube and into um, a seacock. Now, what is a seacock? A seacock is just a way to get the water from outside the boat, inside the boat, but under control. It usually runs off an engine or something like that. We use normally seacocks to actually cool the engine down or to supply pumps. There might be a wee clue in that. So, without further ado, guys, let's get on with educating you all about seacocks. Right guys, I know um, it looks like I've been doing not very much since the last time I spoke to you, but I tell you what, it's the weather's not changed, it's still dull and wet and miserable. I had one day of sunshine, I thought, yes, spring's here at last. And then we're back to the rubbish the next again day. So I thought today, because I'm going on to my next job, which is uh, fitting a new seacock. Now, why would I want to fit a new seacock? Well, there's a job coming that everybody will like and some of you will find rather interesting indeed. So today we're going to talk about the scoop and what it attaches to the seacock and we're going to talk about each part in turn. Right guys, here we have our scoop. Now this uh, goes on the outside of the vessel, this part here and this part goes on the inside of the vessel and we do that by drilling a lovely big inch and a half hole through the bottom of our boat. Now, this little dial here is very important indeed because this is your earthing band. Now, with all movement of water, we'll build up static electricity. And if you don't get rid of that static electricity, what will happen is it will eat all your soft metals on the boat. And since your uh, engine head's made of aluminium and your propeller's made of bronze, uh, then you're in a world to heart. And then you've got your shaft as well. Your shaft is stainless steel. So I'll eat all that first before it eats anything else. So that is just as important as what this does. Now, the scoop itself. This is the type that I like. A lot of people like it more like this type. Only because you can clear this better. But for me... I, I like this with the, the grate already in place. I've never had a bother with this in the uh, two boats that I've used for it, and I've used th these boats for over 25 years. So, um, never had a problem yet with that uh, actually clogging. So, this is the scoop. Lovely piece of kit. Very expensive piece of kit, but it's lovely. Oh, another top tip. When you're actually fitting a scoop, okay, um, always fit it that way. Your stem or the front of the vessel is to uh, your right and the rear of the vessel is to the left. If you fit it that way, what will happen is, because boats move forward 95% of the time, the force of the water running in this, getting forced into it, will actually 
come through your top quicker, um, seals will break and you could actually flood your boat and it has happened in the past. So always make sure that you have the bulbous spit at the front or facing the front at least, as best you can. Obviously, it depends on your type of boat that you have. It comes in three main parts. We have the scoop itself, then we have our earthen band, and then we have our lovely huge nut. Now, when you fit these, what's best to do is actually have a huge packing block at the back here. So you pick your place where you're gonna put your um, scoop, which is hopefully the lowest part of the vessel. Uh, well, the point is practical at least, because you don't want pumps to dry out or seacocks to dry out. You're wanting them constantly full of water and water being able to get to them. So what we do is we put, uh, once we've drilled through, we put that up underneath the vessel. Now the bottom of the boat will come flush with this lip. So when you fit these, it's a good idea to put a wee bit of Seekerflex all the way around these parts here. And then once you've got it onto the vessel, on the back, you need a block. Now obviously you'll put a block, it'll be something like that, on the back end of the vessel, which we will be making in a few minutes. Uh, one to actually fit. Now, this block has to have a good radius roundabout because once uh, this goes back on and this goes back on and then you've got your um, the next part of your seacox which is your on-off valve and then the strainer itself. There's a lot of weight there and you have to reinforce that weight as best as possible and we do that by putting a packing block at the other side of the hull. So guys, this is the Seacock in its entirety. This is all the parts that we have for it and it is a big one for such a small vessel, I will give you that. But there's a reason for that and that will be coming up in a later vlog. Now we have our scoop which we've already seen. Now we have our on-off ball valve. There's different types of valves you can get. This is the ones I like to use as a ball valve because it's just one swift movement and the water is completely shut off. Uh, there's other types that it twists um, like a little uh, round handle and basically it slowly puts the valve in. So that takes a long time for uh, to you to stop the flowy water. Then we have a strainer. Now inside the strainer, in fact, we'll go into more detail about the strainer when we come to the strainer itself. And then we've got our outlet. This outlet will go to your engine or your pump or wherever you need it to go. So now that we've talked about that, let's take each part in turn and we'll talk about the ball valve next. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is our one and a half inch ball valve, as you can see by what it says on there. And 316 stainless steel. Nothing but the best for the Lindsay B. Now, as you can see, it's very well constructed and it's very heavy indeed. Now, I'm going to sh uh, shut the valve off, but it takes a little bit of doing, uh, especially when it's no, no rigged up because it's so sticky. See that white taper that you've got inside there? Oh, I think I can show you. Aye. That white bit just inside there. Well... That's a seal, and my God, it's a seal of seals, I swear to God. Now, give me two seconds, guys. Let's push, push, Barry, push. Oh, in fact, I must be easy enough. Right, here we go. See that? Total. Shuts off very easily indeed. So there we go, guys. That's it all shut off, and... I can assure you, you will not get any water through there. Absolutely wonderful. And like I say, it takes seconds to turn that off. Um, on the other ones, it's like the old fashioned valve and it pushes across, pushes across, pushes across until it's actually shut. But it takes so long, you're twisting, twisting, and twisting and twisting. And you're thinking, am I never going to get, get to the end of this? But with this, just turn the lever, Bob's your uncle. Right guys, this bit we call the strainer. Now this basically does as it says, it strains. It, it catches all the rubbish uh, with this 
and these are all the main parts for it. You have the body of the strainer itself, which is brass, and it's very thick indeed. And it's got oh, a good bit of weight about it. Uh, then we have the rubber seal for on the top, and then the cap, and then the two lug nuts that go on each end of these for inspections, and then obviously you have the strainer in here. Now this is your inlet, and that is your outlet. Remember I said earlier on, this this is the part that goes to your engine. Now, when you take a look in here, you can see right down, quite happily. And the same when you look up for the bottom of the boat or uh, in your scoop, you should be able to see right through as well. This is a hint for later on in the vlog. <laughs> so how does it all go together? Well, basically, we get our strainer, our mesh. Now, we take this out, out uh, depending on what time of year it is, we're expecting the growth, which means weedy water, and we would check this at least once every fortnight. Now, eh, all the weed and that get caught up in there, all the wee bits of plastic, all the rubbish, and you just, it's a simple case of just taking it out, washing it clean, and then putting it back into your strainer. Now, it must run flush with the top there. Then, obviously, we put the rubber seal back on top. This is very hard to do with one hand, by the way. <laughs> I hope you appreciate my efforts, guys. Oh, ah, ah, no. Make sure it's sitting down properly. Excuse me. There we go. And that goes on there like so. Bump, bump. And then you put your lug nuts on. Perfect. And there we have it. One strainer ready for use. Right, my lovely lot. Um, obviously, this is what it looks like in its entirety. We've got the scoop, we have got the ball valve, and we've got the strainer. Now, Remember what I was saying about, about the pad when you put it on the other side of the vessel. So the bottom of the boat goes onto the lip, as you can see there. And then we needed the pad to fit in this sort of area. Well, the pad's there to stop the pendulum effect. Because if you think of the weight of this, I mean, this is, oh, it's a good heavy weight. If something accidentally falls on it or something like that and wants to go that way, if you just have that on your deck, eh, on your hull, it's going to make a massive hole. So the more we can do to support all this weight, the better off your vessel is going to be. Plus, it's an MCA requirement, so you must have a big pad on the back of this. And that is exactly what we're going to be making next. All right, guys, you're never going to believe this. I found a piece that is the, uh, about the right size now. It's one inch thick marine plywood, and it'll fit in perfectly in there. Now what you've got to take into consideration is the thickness of your hull and then where your pad's going to go and what's left on the other side for tightening up. Now, what, we'll, what you've also got to remember is the curvature of your vessel. Now obviously every boat, every boat's got a, a nice round bum and if where we're going to put this, it's got a nice round bum. That's why we can't make this piece too big. So it's to find a happy medium. It's either that or you have to shape the wood to the hull and that takes a, a little bit of fettle and it really does. It takes up a lot of time and time is a luxury we do not have. So what have I got to do to this now? So this is the perfect size. All I want to do is knock the corners off. I want a wee 45 degrees uh, angle on each edge because we have to fiberglass this in. Uh, before you do any drilling of any sorts, what we do is we get this all angled off, nice and rounded edges, whatever we've got to do, so it's easier to glass. Once it's glassed in, well, we need to seek a flex it in first, seek a flex it in place, then fiberglass over the top of it. So, let's hope the weather's better than this, than what is out there than now. Once again, minging. And this is why I kind of get the boat to see. Ah, 
Tell me the Dumbo Harbour Trusky Day with is a wee uh, pull down shed that you can put up over your boat and that. Yes, you could probably hire them, but I've not got any money. My God, I'm a poor fisherman, folk, folks, I tell you. Oh, right, anyway, table saw's out and let's get on with this. Remember, guys, always safety glasses and ear defence. Myself. Right guys, the last thing I like to do before um, we go and glass up is actually score where the fibreglass is going to go. Now the reason I do that is just basically so the fibreglass can actually grip the material. Or, or all I do is get a lovely old piece of wood like that. Get dad's old screwdriver and score like that. I do on the other side. And then once I've done all the way across that way and all the way across that way, I'll soap sides. I'll go here and here. And then same again across there, across there, till you've got a sort of a lovely pattern all, all the way across. So the actual resin and that will penetrate right inside these grooves and it'll give you a good bond. Right ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to everybody that put in suggestions about my rusty nuts and bolts at the potholer area. And I've worked with stainless steel for a long time and I kind of know what I'm doing with it. And I can't thank you enough for all your suggestions on how to cure what's wrong and what the cause may be. Now I had one great suggestion saying that it actually might be a rusty old socket that's put it on and you've got contamination, which actually might be a plausible cause uh, because uh, once you rub the rust off the stainless steel, it comes away quite well. So yeah, so all your, uh, all your suggestions about what to use on it, like uh, Harpic and all these, that sort of things. I mean, that'll clean up lovely. I'm, I'm positive it will do. But uh, in case it doesn't, I'm going to change the, the washers and the bolts uh, nuts anyway. Now, I've got a selection out here. Now, all these, I don't know if we can zoom in enough to see. Will it zoom in? No, it's not going to zoom in. This is going to have to take my word for it. Anyway, on the back of these, it's got stamped A4. And on these washers, it's stamped A4. Now, another way you can actually test to see if your stainless steel is proper stainless steel is by getting a magnet and running over. And if it picks up, So we know that's definitely stainless steel. Now I'm sure I've got one over here that actually isn't quite so well. And of course I'm not going to be able to find it now. <laughs> Aha! There you go. Right, so that's magnetised. Yeah, there you go. So what does it say on that? A2. So there's your difference there. That's an A2. So that's that's mainly for fresh water. See the difference? They're A4. Absolutely nothing. So technically they should be good for C. So we'll put these on instead a uh, what's already there. Also we'll take the old ones off, clean it up, and then we'll put these new ones on. And I was actually going to give them a little coating of um, silicone grease, see if that helps prolong the rustiness. But once we clean it up and that, I've, I've got good faith that it's going to um, go right this time. 
<laughs> right. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the deep dark hole that is Lindsay B's Bulges. Now today we're going to be fitting the packing block for a new seacock. And uh, yeah, as you can see from the seacock I've already put in, we've got a nice pad there. That's also raised up and a new seacock is going to go in here. Now when you're actually fitting a seacock, there's a lot to take into consideration. And the first thing you've got to look at is the shape of your boat. So we're going on outside of the boat. Excuse me, old man on dodgy ladders. <laughs> right. Cassie on for Richard's Creels. Right, as you can see, we've got a lovely flare underneath the hull there. And... Uh, this is where our seacock is, where you see the engine. Now you notice the direction that I've got this. Uh, the wee bulbous ball at the front and the scoop at the back. That way, always forward motion. You're no ramming uh, water into the actual seacock itself. Now where we're going to put the next one? Should be right under there somewhere. And as you can see by the shape of the angle of the boat, but well, I don't know, get right underneath. Ah. Yeah, it's a wee funny angle. Now, what we have to do is, you can do one of two things. You can shape a, a block to fiberglass onto the bottom of your boat so it's nice and level, or you can take it from the shape of the boat. Now, luckily for us, it's not too uh, curvature an angle like it is behind me here. So what we'll do is we'll actually fit the seacock, but it'll be at a slight angle inside the boat. Obviously not like that, it's just because I'm upside down underneath a boat I'm like this. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what we've done with our sounder just to give you a prime example. Right guys, this is what I mean. You see what we've done, we've shaped the block to, uh, to this shape of the hull so the sounder sits straight. The reason I've done that is because the sounder just echoes straight down from the bottom. It doesn't do a side scan. Uh, Seacock's exactly the same thing. If you want to do this, it's a lot of work, trust me. Uh, it is great for inside the, the vessel because everything's nice and straight but if you put a block inside that on the outside of the boat you've got to do the same on inside so your seacock sits straight whereas what we're going to do today is we're just going to angle our little seacock and there's also parameters for that Whew. Right guys, obviously I've talked a lot up the shed about uh, what's what but here we're now on, on the boat itself you get a better idea of what, what to do. Now the wee backing pad is obviously smaller than the one I've got at the back there, but that'll not matter. But what you've got to take into consideration is the thickness of your tube. So the more that you can spread the, the top weight, the better, because like I said before, if anything accidentally knocks and you get that pendulum effect, I'll rip a gaping big hole in the bottom of your boat if you just put it, if you just put the scoop, Right to the direct to the hole and then put the nut right down can onto the bottom of the boat, then it's got no support whatsoever. So support is the key. Also the other thing is a good thing, before you even do any drilling or anything of that sort, is put your um, whole sea cock together and then see where everything's going, going to lie because you don't want the shut off handle knocking on a rib or anything like that because you'll not get the seacock shut correctly. So the more you can do to keep it away from places like that, the better it is for you and the better for it is for the MCA as well. Uh, what else was there to discuss? Uh, oh, uh, 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 let me think. Right, doing there, doing that. Yeah, big, big one. I'll reiterate it again since we're on the boat. Is it must take water all the time. That's why you've got to put it at the lowest point of the boat as physically possible. Obviously, you've got to think about where it is uh, for your engine and stuff like that. I mean, I'll put that one over there, but I know how the boat was sitting in the water and to me, that was the lowest point. Uh, obviously, you'd think that bit's lower, but the way she sits, it's just, that's the lowest point I could possibly get for the water intake. Now, this is a secondary sea coke. So, it's not as important to find that sweet spot for um, putting the seacock in. So, 
when they're boat ropes and uh, pitches and rolls, if it draws a little air, it's not going to hurt the item too much. I'm not going to say too much about the item because that's another vlog. <laughs> yeah, so I'm rabbiting on a lot here. I know, I hope you make sense at all. The basics, the summary, make sure you put a backing pad on, make sure it's at the bottom of the boat as cl close, as far into the waterline as you possibly physically can towards all your uh, instruments and your mechanicals, whatever you need. And remember, earth. Earth and it is so important with seacocks. Get it earth to your mechanical side of your earth and system. And Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt, you'll have a sweet installation. Right, so what have we got to do now? So we're going to put our seacock right about this area. And uh, what I need to do is take back all this white stuff on top of the fiberglass itself. Now the boat should be about an inch thick of fiberglass material. So all we're trying to do is just take the top coating off. We don't know what to go digging or anything like that. Just take take that off and uh, we'll glue the patch in and then we'll fiberglass over it. And I'll show you each, I'll, we'll go through each step at a time. But before we do that, Obviously grinding makes an awful lot of mess. Make sure you wear the correct PPE and get all your stuff covered up. That's what all these is for. <laughs> so I'm going to get on with that for LA. Yes, I prepare for getting on with this job. Hey right guys, I'm in my gimp suit, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> uh, this is where I think I'm going to be putting my patch. Um, I went and marked where the scoop goes roughly. I don't know if you can see the black marks. Uh, so we've got a general idea of we know where the scoop's going to go. Now we need to also have the sandwich effect from the, the scoop to the, the back the back and nut. So we're lucky enough it fits everything. And then, like I say, this piece is nice and small as, as well because of the curvature of the boat. You're no wanting like it touching here and touching here and nothing in the middle. That's just no good state of affairs. So what I'm going to do now is take all this back with a grinder, get back to the gel coat, hey, sorry, the fibres, and then we'll take it from there. Glue it, screw it and glaze it. Right guys, obviously we have to clean up the dust, so we're going to use the vacuum cleaner for that. Then we're going to give that a rub down with acetone and then get the actual uh, bit of wood glued. Once it's glued in place, then we're going away and prepare the matting. Obviously all this is to get detailed. I'll do that again with the hoover off. Obviously all this is to get detailed, but that's not going to happen until we've got all the jobs done on the boat and there's still a few to do. Right. What's next? Acetone. Hi right guys, here we go. We've uh, got our mat and sorted out. Now the best idea is, is to have torn ends like that. Do not take the scissors out and get nice straight edges because it just looks a mess. This is the best way to actually blend your glass in. Now I've cut it all to size, obviously just total all to size actually. And you've got to remember the height of your, your um, block as well. So you'll need a little bit of space. So we're going to put three layers of this matting on. So wish us luck. The weather has been absolutely on and off. It's, there's been rain, there's been wind. Oh, 
Fair enough, yeah. We just thought to settle down, please. So next what we're going to do is we're going to wet out the fibreglass and we're going to start off with our smallest section. So we'll wet this out, leave it a second, wet this area, uh, then put that down, roll it out. Good key to good fibreglass and it's always roll everything to its, an inch of its life, an inch. If you do that, you'll get a good, good of here and you build up the layers while it, everything is still wet as well. So there's another top tip. Right, shall we get on with this? Difficult, here comes the rain. Honestly, this weather's oh, just useless. Weatherman can't get nothing right. Well, anything that could go wrong will go wrong, and that's everything to do with boating. F weatherman, honestly, oh, it's supposed to be like fing 2% chance of rain today. Look at this. And of course, it's exactly the same time as I started the fiberglass, and I've only got one um, coat on. Uh, the f***ing bottle of the hardener broke in my hand. Oh, jeez, oh. Honestly, not a good time. Of course, I've had to hurry up and pack everything away while the rain's on. Just hope it's quick passing so we can get on with this. This is not a time for it to this I, I really need to get the other two layers on what I really want to do is get a trailer for her and I can get her up the farm and I can make a bloody shelter for her because this every year is fighting this all the time it's just, it's just a f***ing nightmare guys it really is anyway I'm having a rant again <laughs> right has it stopped yet I think it stopped right I'm going to go a little, I'm going to go back on with this <sighs> wish me luck guys wish me luck a woman need it Three layers off. Hey guys, there we go. Not the best work, but it'll do. It's in. I just need it to set now. Oh, bloody weather, mate, honestly. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, good uh, morning. It's uh, Saturday, whatever day it is. I have no idea, just time's hashing on. <laughs> and we're coming down to actually put the scoop in today. However, I think with last night's conditions, it might not be getting done. Now, if we have a look here, it's not the best of jobs. You can see a lot of air bubbles, etc. Uh, I can guarantee it was because of the conditions yesterday. But we'll just hash on anyway. Uh, I've not got time to hang about because I need this boat in the water to make money. This is just getting beyond a joke now. I mean, nah, 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 nah. I'm always negative on this channel, I really am. But it's just so hard. Especially trying to make ends meet, it's just you can't expect wee businesses to only earn a little drop to try and last all winter long, and then when this uh, winter lasts into spring, if you know what I mean. Because I mean, look, it's bloody reeking again today, and tomorrow the winds to drop, and then the rains to come again. I just oh, 
Yeah, right. Anyway, getting on with this. Concentrate, Barry. There we go. Right, so we're fitting uh, this today, and obviously we have our scoop. Now we've got our hole cutter here, and it should be the same size. Now, I measured it, it was 48 millimeters down at the bottom. We'll see if I can show you a bit better. Right, obviously we've got the flat bottom bit here, and we've got the wee turn up there. Now, I measured that at its widest part, and it was 48 millimeters. Now, you didn't want to go too wide with your hole cutter because there's not a lot of meat for this sort of direction you've uh, yeah there's not a lot of meat there so you have to keep it as close to what your your neck is as much as possible so what we're going to do now we're going to find x marks the spot in the center we're going to drill a pilot hole um how to get it nice and straight for the shape of the hull is you put your square onto the hull and then that'll give you the direction that you actually need to drill it for the angle of the hull. And then once we've got the pilot through then we try it with the, the big cutter. Now the pad was one inch and the hull should be an inch so I don't think I'm going to get two inches in there. So we'll see. It might go through, it might not. So. That one's picking up again. Oh, I can't get bloody working, man. Right. So, guys, I have to use the angle. Right folks, there we have it. The hole is all ready to rock and roll. Uh, took a little bit of fettling this morning, but we're good to go. Everything's been wiped down with acetone. Ready for it. Now what I'll probably do is young Ryan's going to help me. And we'll put a beady seeker flex right around the outside there. And down in here. Ryan will stick it up underneath and then hold it with a stulchion, making sure it's facing that way bulbous bow to the front of the vessel and then I'll come uh, at the back in here we'll put that on top remember how important this is see this is your earthen clamp and then a lovely nut on top now when we put the nut down to where it meets everything uh, we'll be putting some add blue on it basically that'll seal everything up and it'll make everything nice and tight especially over time make it up proper stulchion that way kid that way bobble spout at the front same as the yin at the back Oh, it doesn't fit. <laughs> just going to put that blue stuff on it, Brian. Yeah. I'm just going to put some sealant on it. Is it not? Pull it once we get the hoo-ha on it. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go. All great plans don't go according to plan. Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to get a new uh, skin fitting for it. Because uh, the shape of the hull, like I was telling you earlier on, it all predicts on how you uh, actually fit the, the item. Now, on dry fit, it looked good, but when we went to wet fit everything, it uh, just didn't go according to plan. So, I'll get back to you when the weather's decent and the parts have arrived. <laughs>